10.1 included some of the biggest changes ever to PvP, including some controversial nerfs that might change the future of Arena. Unfortunately, figuring out what patch notes even matter is like sorting through Asmongold's room. It's almost impossible. This is why we've done the dirty work for you. We went through every patch note one by one to predict how PvP might actually change in 10.1. But before we get started, let us know in the comments below your predictions for tier lists in 10.1. And while that's happening, we want to let you know that Skill Capped has leveled up for the new season. For a limited time, website members can submit their gameplay to be reviewed by Rank 1 Gladiators, who will watch through arena footage and give personalized advice for how to improve. Last season, our VOD reviews helped Resto Druid climb over 500 rating, from Rival all the way to 2400 in Solo Shuffle. These user reviews are added to our library of arena commentaries, where our network of expert players break down matchups and give you the advice needed to climb. This includes BlizzCon champion Joe Fernandez and Hunter legend Big Max, who have some website-exclusive VOD reviews that can only be found at skillcap.com. All this and more is why Skillcapped is the only place that guarantees results with our 400 rating gain guarantee. If you don't gain rating while using our website, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at skillcap.com using the links below, but for now, enjoy the video. First up, in some minor news, the weekly map rotation has changed. And in case you don't know what that even means, every week there's a different set of playable maps for skirmishes and ranked arenas. There are three map pools total with eight maps each. One of the biggest changes here is that you'll no longer have Empyrean Domain in the same week as Blade's Edge which means your eyeballs and your sanity can get a much needed break. Another minor change includes a revamp on the reward system for PvP. You'll now get less honor and conquest from Solo Shuffle and more from constructed rated arena and RBGs. This could be an attempt to get more people to queue rated arena since Solo Shuffle has become the most popular bracket by a large margin. This might come as bad news if you only cap your tunes and farm gear with Solo Shuffle, but it might help encourage people to play 3v3 in the tens of people who are still playing 2v2. Now let's get into the major changes included in the patch, including some that might have a profound effect on the meta. These include three things, changes to CC duration, an overhaul to interrupts, and a reduction of the crit modifier. These have all been controversial changes to say the least, but we're here to break it down. First up, Precognition is gone as a PvP talent and instead, it's been converted to an embellishment that can be put on crafted gear. On paper, this has opened up an entirely new PvP talent slot for many cast respects, but mostly Warlocks, Mages, and Boomkins who relied heavily on this effect in Season 1. And now, since the CC reduction from gear and the Trinket Set bonus has been removed, the Precog embellishment will probably become standard for almost every caster DPS. Note that players can only have two unique embellishments on their gear at a given time, and Embers of Neltharion will also be adding more cool and strong effects to this row. Most notably, the crafted tailoring cloak seems very strong for arenas for its auto-proc shield effect, and it honestly wouldn't be surprising if by the time we actually release this video, it's already been nerfed in PvP combat. While making Precog Baseline might not have been too controversial, it comes with another massive overhaul, as Patch 10.1 also nerfed the duration of every interrupt. So not only will missing out on interrupts feel bad since it procs Precog, but now even landing an interrupt won't be as impactful since the overall lockout duration is lower. If you're a caster DPS, this is honestly like double dipping, a win-win situation for you no matter what. Now on the flip side, some players might argue that the risk-reward balance of this interrupting may be out of balance. From the earliest days of Arena, interrupting and fake casting have been one of PvP's most iconic mechanics. But as the game has progressed, there have been more and more micro CCs and interrupts added to the game, which has made it more difficult to actually land casts, especially for specs like Affliction Warlock who only have one spell on a different school. With 10.1 nerfing interrupts across the board, there's one big question that everyone must be asking. Is interrupt not worth it anymore? If you're really good at kicking and rarely miss your interrupts, every caster having precog is no big deal. But let's pretend you're playing a shaman against a caster. 
Your wind shear only has a two second lockout period, and missing your kit can give twice the duration of complete immunity to crowd control and further interrupts, while also giving your opponent a mini bloodlust. Now missing your interrupts will be even more punishing than before. So that means interrupting is pointless then? Well, no. Interrupting is definitely not dead. In fact, there's a crucial mechanic of PvP that remains unchanged, which is denying any follow-up CC. We're talking about situations like Dragon's Breath and a Polymorph, Bash and a Cyclone, or Shadow Fury and a Fear. In these crucial moments, a well-timed kick can determine the outcome of the game, by the nature of the fact that there's only a small window of time that a follow-up CC can be cast, making it hard to fake and easier to deny. If you want to learn more about interrupting, check out the guide we made last season. Now, it'll be even more important to land high-priority interrupts. This single change might have been the most controversial and debated subject of the new patch, but we think there might have been a slight overreaction from some members of the community. Moving on, the next major change in the patch is a nerf of crowd control durations for most classes. The first thing we need to consider is that the Gladiator's Distinction CC Reduction and the Crafted Embellishment CC Reduction were both removed in the patch. This translates to every CC being a baseline 15% longer prior to the nerfs. So when people read the patch notes and they see Polymorph and Freezing Trap going from 8 seconds down to 6, it initially looks like a 2 seconds nerf to its duration while in fact, it's only a 0.8 second reduction after taking into consideration the Gladiator's distinction changes that already reduced that value by 1.2 seconds. This is universal across every nerfed CC, including stunts like Hammer of Justice and Kidney Shot. Even though the new duration of these effects might be shorter overall, the nerfs will likely not be felt much in actual gameplay. Honestly, the place where it might be felt most is in your wallet, spending 20 bucks for a race change back to Orc. Now on top of this, some crowd control wasn't even nerfed in the patch, including Cyclone and Fear, which prior to 10.1 had a real duration of 5.1 seconds with the CC reduction, and now will be straight up buffed since the duration will go up passively. With all of that being said though, of course, there will be winners and losers at the end of the day. Destruction Warlock is one clear winner, since Mortal Coil, Shadow Fury, Fear, and Infernal Stun were all untouched. The biggest loser is probably Rogue, as Blind took a massive hit, going all the way from 8 seconds to 5, making it a 1.8 second nerf that also removes the possibility of sapping the target off the blind. Not only that, but with no single CC lasting more than 6 seconds from now on, enemy healers will barely drop out of combat, making a follow-up sap almost impossible in most situations. However, for the actual game itself, while these changes seem to be massive, they should be looked at as a shift in gameplay that we need to actually see play out. The only thing we can assure you is that CC is far from being dead, with plenty of abilities in fact getting buffed and others not as nerfed as it seems. Denying control from the enemy will always be a fundamental key of WoW PvP, and crowd control will likely be at the core of every win condition no matter what. With that being said, the next major update is the return of the old crit modifier. As a quick history lesson here, crits were originally 200% normal damage up until Warlords of Draenor where crits then became 150%, which remained true all the way up until Shadowlands, where crit damage was buffed to 175%. And now, crits are back to their 150% value, which means we've gone full circle here. Now, there are some specs with increased crit multipliers, like Elemental Shamans, Evokers, and even Dwarves. And over time, the value of Critical Strike has gone up and down, but they're usually the main culprit of big one-shot damage that we've grown used to, especially in recent expansions. Blizzard has long tried to find the sweet spot between crit feeling relevant as a stat and it being way too RNG and gimmicky. In Season 1 of Dragonflight, crit damage from some specs, especially evokers, left players unable to react to damage. The last time we had the 150% crit multiplier was during Battle for Azeroth, and if you skip PvPing during this time, you should know that the average length of a high-rated BFA arena game was around 5-10 to 10 minutes, with many games going even longer until dampening ramped up to crazy percentages, 
In fact, some of the BFA tournaments were so long that you could literally watch an entire movie before a single series ended. And now I don't want to give you the impression that the average game duration will go back to 5 minute snooze fest here. It might be at a tournament level, but overall, there have been measures to counteract longer games. We cannot forget that dampening nowadays starts at minute zero and ramps up way faster than prior expansions. In Solo Shuffle, dampening ramps up even faster, and usually longer games are won or lost based on healer mana and not massive crit damage. To further soften the crit nerf, they've tuned up the classes and abilities that deeply relied on critical strike damage, like buffing crit-based cooldowns like Combustion or spells that already had a guaranteed crit mechanic, such as Obliterate, Lava Burst, and Chaos Bolt, giving them a damage increase to compensate the crit modifier nerf. The final thing that will affect game pacing is an overall increase to health pools and a further tuning to the PvP Trinket set bonus, which now grants a huge increase to primary stats and a minor increase to stamina. The clear objective of this change is to address the natural increase in survivability that comes with a new patch, due to the addition of extra stats such as armor, stamina, and versatility. Overall, these changes should align with Blizzard's actual intentions, which is to, quote, give players more time to react to incoming damage, making their choices about cooldowns and mana management more meaningful. We should all agree that it does sound like a step in the right direction if the goal is to create a more rewarding and satisfying gameplay for everyone in Arena. For healers, it will be a much needed quality of life improvement to not be constantly on your toes just desperately trying to predict the next 100 to zero that takes your sweet points away. For DPS, it'll feel like your damage is more impactful, and every global you press will matter in the long run, and not like you're constantly waiting for a lucky critical strike to close out the game. And lastly, we have clash changes in tuning. And boy, 10.1 brought a lot of changes in this department. In some cases, we saw massive reworks, such as a huge redesign to Shadow Priest and several changes to PvP talents. This includes some weird mechanics, like the new Burrow spell for Shamans, and the return of a baby Greater Fade for Priests with the Phase Shift talent. There were also some tuning to existing spells in PvP. And as a reminder, if you want to stay ahead of the meta this season, be sure to check out skillcapped.com. Last season, we helped thousands of PvPers hit their rating goals, from Challenger all the way up to Rank 1. We're the only place that guarantees you'll gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. And if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to learn more and get the rating you've always wanted. Anyways, guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts on the upcoming meta in the comments below. And as always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.